Hello Fish Duck friends, Kurt here, back again with yet another Fish Duck 101 video podcast. Today we're talking with one of my all-time favorite Oregon Ducks linebackers, Blair Phillips. Blair came to Eugene in 2005 as a JC transfer from Mississippi Gulf Coast College and he quickly made an impression, starting with a clutch interception against Arizona State in 2005 that sparked Oregon's comeback. And of course, not only was he a vital cog in the defense from that point forward, he's the one who blocked the field goal at the end of the 2006 Oklahoma Sooners game that we will always remember, not just for an onside kick. I didn't see the refs block that at, at the end. So, you know, you, you saved the game that, that day, one of just many plays he made as an Oregon Duck. He then spent two years playing in the NFL and is now a high school coach in Louisiana. Blair, thank you so much for taking some time out to, to talk to us today. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate the... the opportunity to get back and say something to the fans because like I know most of the time like we don't get a chance to say thank you so this is you know one of those ways to do it but thanks to all the fans and, and everybody to help support while I was in, uh, in Eugene. For the two years that you were at Oregon people thought you were someone else <laughs> in that yeah. you were one of the few players on teams with uh, braids that you still have and uh, yeah. there's a certain other player that was quite recognizable <laughs> quite a personality on the team uh, my question to you is, uh, I know a lot of kids came up to you and asked if you are uh, Justin Finnessy and asked for your aut autograph. How many times did Justin Finnessy uh, was was asked if he was Blair Phillips? I don't think he was asked at all. <laughs> like, ever. Maybe if he came back, you know, during my senior year. But aside from that, I really don't think he was ever asked because, he, you know, <laughs> he did a whole lot more before I got there. But I, I really hope, like, when he came, because I remember him there for a couple of games during during my senior year. But I really hope that, like, when he got there, people asked, "Hey, Blair Phillips, give me an autograph." I had to go, <laughs> man, I went through so much when I first got there. Just fantasy, fantasy. Oh, you're not fantasy, and like, you know, they they get upset with me. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not him. I'm sorry. Did, <laughs> yeah. did you ever actually sign autographs of Justin Fantasy? Yeah, <laughs> I had to work on uh, how Finn signed his number uh, and you know signed his name so I could you know get right so I wouldn't make it, everybody mad. Well, my first memory of you as a player uh, was the Arizona State game in 2005. It was on the road in Tempe, and it was a game that there was a lot of hype going into that one. Arizona State looked to be a really solid team, and for a while there, it looked like they were going to steamroll over Oregon. They're starting to drive yeah. to the to uh, the end zone, and all of a sudden, this guy that no one's heard of named Blair Phillips intercepts a pass, returns it for about 40 <laughs> yards, and everyone went nuts because, oh wow, there's this great this is great play. Who's Blair Phillips? <laughs> Arizona State. I remember, you know, it was a, a national game. I think they were televising the game. Um, and I remember the uh, Arizona State's linebacker making an interception, and you know he, you know, ran it back, or, or you know, almost scored, but he ran it back pretty far. And I remember, um, you know, Demetrius Williams having a really good game, and, and I remember uh, seeing uh, Terrence Whitehead dive, you know, for the corner end zone. And he gets, you know, spun in a helicopter, you know, spinning around the, the the pylon. And I was just thinking, like, man, this is like, this is college football. This is, you know, you know what, Intense. what I, <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this is, this is what I, I, I've wanted to do, you know, since I was a kid. And um, and I remember um, going into that drive um, and just you know going into you know going back to film study you know these situations they were like these routes and you know they they're gonna run this this guy's gonna do that and you know whatever and then uh, you know the coverage we called um, I think we were in in cover two actually and uh, like I'm usually like the deep middle of the field and I remember um, jumping a, a route earlier in the game when there was a route that came behind me and I just remember to be patient sit back. And when I saw him throw the ball, like it kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, I know he, see, he he sees me here, but he's throwing the ball still. So the only thing I could do is, you know, get a hand up and actually, you know, stuck and you know, try to get off of the race. Like they always, you know, always gave me crap about it, you know, because you know I got tackled so fast. But <laughs> if, I, if I if I had broken that tackle, I, I think I would have. I know I would have scored. I would have scored. It would have been a you know 90, 80 something yard return, and that would have been you know my first time catching the pick. It's really kind of fascinating how Oregon ended up playing Oklahoma three years in a row with a home and home series in 04 and then the bowl yeah. game in 05 and then coming back to Austin in 06. I was there in the stands to witness all of it. There's so many things that could be said about that 2006 Oklahoma game. But, <laughs> but what's lost in the mix of it is the fact you had probably your best game of your entire career. Oklahoma lined up for what would have been a game winning field goal and you got a paw yeah. on the ball to, to knock it down. Walk me through that whole 
sequence of of uh, blocking the game winning. I mean, that's the kind of thing you dream of, you know, to be able to make the final play of the game. Well, um, that, that, my, my dad had never been to a game before. Um, we were not in Oregon. And um, he finally got a chance to come out. And, um, you know, so he's in the stands. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, man, I got to have a great game. My dad's here. Got to, you know, got to perform well. You know, I'm expecting my son. My son was going to be born, you know, a couple of weeks later. And, and, um, and it was just like a chance to play, you know, national televised game. Um, like going into that, into their last possession, I remember being just mad, like very, 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 very angry at the fact that they almost returned the kickoff for a touchdown. It's like, you know, we got to do our jobs, man. Like, we're yeah. going to win. Like, we got to yeah. preserve the win. And there were a couple of plays that came before that, that, um, you know, people got off the, off the pile a little bit too fast. It's like, you know, kind of, you know, we got to, got to drain the clock. We got to kind of run time out. Yeah, just, yeah, just, 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 just get off <laughs> the pile take, a little take bit, guys. Take your time. So I'm not, you know, screaming about that, you know, trying to, you know, trying to get everything together. And uh, I remember uh, them, you know, there was a timeout and uh, they're, you know, getting ready to kick the field goal. And I just kept, you know, I went up to Coach Gray and um, and I just kept telling him, hey, let's go middle push, middle push. Because I, you know, I realized, you know, it was a longer kick. So, you know, the trajectory of the kick was going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit lower. So if we can get in, you know, we wouldn't have to jump. You know, I wouldn't have to use my 52 inch vertical, you know, all the way. And, uh, you know, <laughs> like, so, you know, they went ahead and went went middle push, <laughs> pushed them into the line and, um, you know, finally got my hands up and, you know, got maybe about two inches off the ground, but I got high enough to, <laughs> you know, actually get a hand off the, on the ball. And, you know, I block, like I've never blocked a kick before in playing ball, like as a kid, anything. And like to get it in, on that stage, it was crazy. And I remember, um, you know, when I felt the ball hit my hand and I was just, man, uh, just just going crazy. Like I knew we had won the game. And then like, you know, so I took off from, you know, all the way to the other end zone and then, you know, <laughs> ran back to the other. And I'm like, you know, dodging people, you know, the fans are on the field, so I'm dodging people. And uh, then I realized like my dad's here. So, you know, I run like, you know, you know, I run back to, you know, where I knew he would come down, you know, to get onto the field. And he's just sitting there and he's, you know, just, just pointing. I'm like, yeah, all right, dad, come on, come on, hurry up. <laughs> so, you know, we get down there and, you know, I just, I just hug my dad. He's like, you know, good game, man, good game. But like to me, like that was like one of the proudest moments just for the fact that, you know, my dad was there and I was over, able to, you know, make a big play when, you know, when my dad was there. Going through the whole play, I don't remember a sound at all. Like I remember, like I, I don't remember, I remember, you know, them saying HUD or, you know, him, you know, signaling and the ball moving. And I do not remember a sound until, you know, the, the crowd, you know, I heard, I heard the crowd once the ball hit my hand. And then after that, it's just like realizing we won, like we won. I just see, like, just see, like people just shooting here and shooting over there and, and going back and forth. Like it was, it was, it was insane. It was crazy, man. Like I've never seen that many people. Like I ended up signing like faces, arms. I signed, I signed somebody's cell phone, but I had to make sure. I was like, uh, like, are you, are you sure you really want me to sign this? Like, you, you got like this is this is permanent. Like, right. yeah, man, sign. It's like, all right, fine. So you know, signing stuff, signing arms. But um, it, it was crazy, man. Like that's probably the the most excited or the most, you know, the the happiest you, like I've ever seen that many people about you know about a football game. It was crazy. But, like you know, my thing was like we won. It's like you know, and and you know, my dad was like, I, and I talked to him, and I was like, uh, and I was like, yeah, uh, you know, dad. So you know, did you have fun at the game? So like, yeah, it's like, were you excited? I was like, I blocked the kick. He's like, I expected you to do it. <laughs> it's like, All right, dad. Thanks. Like you expected to block a, a, a game-ending kick on national television. Like that's that's the goals you have for me. Is <laughs> so right. All right. Why, why didn't you do that sooner? Come on, Blair. Yeah. I mean, come on. So was that your all-time favorite moment as an Oregon Duck? Um. Yes. On on the field. Yes. I think off the field happened the same day. We were <laughs> my dad. Uh, my dad was there, and uh, my you know my girlfriend at the time. Um, you know, we were going to Outback. You know, you gotta celebrate at Outback. Like, who doesn't who doesn't go celebrate a win at Outback? So uh, we're we're standing in line outside the restaurant, and uh, Dante Rosario uh, decided that he wanted to tell people that I was the one that blocked the kick. So you know, it's it's a long line. You know, everybody's there. You know, sitting outside. It's like you know, 30, 45 minute wait just to get in. So you know, you can imagine like the line of people sitting outside on the porch of you know the restaurant. So at that point. Everybody comes over, wants to shake hands, wants to say hey to my dad, wants 
say hey to my girlfriend. And, and, I, and I'm just like, thanks, guy. <laughs> thanks, right. thanks, Dante. I, I really appreciate that. So, like, that, that probably was, like, the funniest thing. Like, and he's just standing back, you know, kind of, you know, sneaks off to the side, like, you know, just standing there laughing. But yeah, that, that, that was guy a, did it. That, that guy did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is the guy that did it. Well, yeah, but that was probably like one of my favorite moments too. Tell me a little bit about your time in the NFL and also the game experience, NFL versus college. You know, running out of the tunnel versus NFL versus coming out of the tunnel at Otson and, and the differences between pro and college. Yeah, uh, um, there's nothing like college football. Like just the the. Like, I don't know, man, just the fans, like people are, you know, they're graduates of that school, like their kids graduated from that school, their, you know, aunts, uncles, nephews, cousins, whoever graduated from that school. So like there there are, you know, generational ties to whatever school. And like, you know, the NFL is not like that. Like you don't always have an uncle that played here. You don't have a, you know, a brother that played here. So, you know, it's more so, you know, around that area, you know, this is a team that I'm with, so this is, you know, the team I'm going to go for. So for me, like the the rivalries, the games, like the the love for college football teams are more intense than the ones for pro football teams. And just coming out like, you know, like there's not as – like the excitement is you know, like it's, it's still there for, you know, NFL games, but I, I, it's a little bit different from having, you know, college students, you know, screaming for guys that they know. And, you know, guys have to pay, you know, $200 for a ticket to screen for players that, you know, change every other year. Right. So, like, uh, I, I, like I, I'm a huge fan. Like, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of college football than I am of the NFL. How are you enjoying being on the other side of the whistle these days? You, you can you can be the one who gives dishes out the punishment as opposed to taking <laughs> it now. Yeah, I, uh, I learned up the old, the, uh, I got him doing the old DP special. Got him doing up downs every now and then. Uh, I have him doing, you know, I have him rolling. That was one of those things that I've learned at Oregon. I mean, I didn't stay in trouble, but you know, the times that I had, you know, the six thirties where I had to run with Coach Rad. Like, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard I've right. heard the stories of six thirties <laughs> and how once you do hey. one, you never want to do it again. Hey, they, they he had um my junior year, there was a kid that got in trouble and he had um a couple hundred yards of rolls, but he did not make practice that afternoon. He didn't make workouts. And he was sick for the rest of the day. I think maybe the next day he recovered. But, like, whatever you had to do to get out of at 6.30, you would try to do it. Like, those are the worst, man. I always look at at my time in Eugene as, you know, pretty much uh, a turning point, as, even off the field, as far as, as me, you know, becoming a father, you know, becoming a man, you know, understanding, you know, how to do everything on my own when, you know, you're so far away from family. And to, to be accepted and to have so much help and to have, you know, so many people that were willing to, you know, kind of stick their necks out for me in that situation. Like, it, it, for me, like, it, it brought them into my extended family. So for that, I say, you know, thank you to all the Duck fans everywhere. Um, and just, you know, just having that experience to play, you know, it's Division One football. You know, there are, are very little people that get a chance to to play in, you know, in front of 60,000 people and, and, and especially play in front of, uh, and play in a stadium like Austin Stadium. You know, you have the, the smartest fans who know when to cheer, when not to cheer, you know, who know how to cheer, what to cheer for, that kind of thing. And like that, that experience kind of, I mean, it spoils everything for any time I go to another stadium. And like, you know, I don't get the same experience, but like, like that is, is one of those things that, you know, you can't you can't put into words how awesome that is. Like it's one of those things like you have to experience for yourself, especially running out, you know, in the tunnel and you know, and behind the bike and, and all that and hearing, you know, that many people scream and yell. But like I, I really appreciate that time. Like it, it's helped me to to see the the great side of college sports, to understand rivalries, to because I had no idea, you know, there's a big rival between U dub and, and, and Oregon or, you know, uh between uh, that school in Corvallis and us and um, you know but like it, it exposed me to that kind of thing and you know it for that I'll, I'll forever be grateful and um, you know I just appreciate you know all the love that I got when I was up there and you know everything that's coming afterwards and, and you know from the bottom of my heart I really thank you. Awesome well Blair Phillips thank you for being a duck and thank you for joining us for the Fish Duck 101 video podcast. Hey thanks for having me man. Go Ducks! Yeah. <laughs>